Dr. Yeah. Hart, you're Closing. muted. Let's start over. Welcome in, everybody. Noon hour on Friday. Good to see all of you. That's a joke because I can't see you. <laughs> uh, exciting day. Uh, Going to present the senior design projects for next year to you. So uh, got a lot of projects to talk about and get through. So let's just go ahead and get started. First, make sure this recording is going. Yes, it is. And then I'll share my screen and let's do it. OK, hopefully we can see presentation. Uh, let's share the other screen. Technology is hard. OK, there we go. All right, away we go. Uh, so here we are, project descriptions for Capstone Design for next year. Uh, so first things first, um, after this talk, I'm going to email you a link where you're going to fill out your preferences. So it's also in this presentation, and I'll also send out this presentation free to review if you want to take a look at this uh, a little bit later. I need you to do this by next Friday because I want to do the matching kind of as soon as I can. So if you're able to, as soon as this presentation's over, you should go fill out your project preferences or maybe talk with some of your friends and, and see what you want to do. All right. If you don't fill out the survey, you're probably not going to get the project you want to work on. You're probably not going to get to work with people that you want to work with. OK, so that's out there. Number one, fill out the survey. Rawr. All right, here we go. Projects try to get through these pretty quick. Most of these projects have actually additional descriptions with them as well that I put into a box folder, which I'll also share with you. So I'm going to go through these pretty quickly, but most of them have an expanded project proposal that go along with them that are maybe, you know, half page or so long. So you might want to look at those as well. But OK, first we have industry affiliated projects. So these projects are going to have some industry affiliation um, and you're going to be co-advised by both an advisor at MSOE and probably have some contact at that company, maybe multiple contacts. OK, we got a couple from Milwaukee Tool. The first is in regards to their rotary hammer. So these rotary hammers are often used in concrete and in cement, and they can kick up dust if they're used. And there's some silica particles sometimes in that concrete and some in that cement. And if you inhale it, that's bad. So they want to create this add on for their hammer. And there's a picture of the hammer in the lower right. You can sort of see it there. Um, they want some add-on that can be used with it that can suck up the dust as it's created, filter it, and collect it so that you're not breathing it in. Um, I would say it probably doesn't eliminate the need for a mask, but it would reduce it substantially. So if you're interested in you know, mechanisms, power tools, filtration, fluids, you're going to have to do a little bit of analysis of airflow probably, so CFD. Um, this one's for you. Uh, you're going to have to take, I think that's the wrong number for the MEC class. Uh, 4160, I think, is the right number there. So got to take that CFD class in the fall, probably, if you're going to um, be interested in this project. They've also had an inquiry into creating a test bench for one of their hammer drill components. So a hammer drill is a drill that basically is drilling and providing you know, some hammering at the same time. And to provide that hammering, they have this sort of striker and anvil inside of their tool. And they would really like to know more about the coefficient of restitution between these two things. So if you think back all the way to your ME2002 and ME2003, Mechanics 2 and Mechanics 3 days about the coefficient of restitution, it's a term that um, is used to describe sort of how elastic or plastic an impact is. So if you want to dust off those ME2002 notes and remember what the coefficient of restitution is, go do that. Um, but basically, you're going to build some sort of test device that allows them to test their internal components to determine what the coefficient of restitution is between those two things as they strike each other. So kind of a cool project. Um, again, mechanisms, dynamics here, you'd have to understand coefficient of restitution, what that is, sort of remember what that thing is. And then there'll, there'll be a lot of testing and experimentation with this one. So you'll probably be building your prototype relatively early and doing a lot of testing with it sort of in the second semester. OK, Enterpack is another tool company and they've contacted us and they want to have a 3D printed object made out of metal for one of their tools. So right now they have this hydraulic pump that you see here that has this valve on the back end of it, this solenoid valve that's quite heavy. This is like machined out of a single piece of metal or a couple of different metal components. And it's just ends up being like quite bulky for them. So what they want to do is they want to redesign this sort of valve back here to be 3D printed out of metal. So here we have the RPC on campus, the Rapid Prototyping Center, and we've had contacts through the RPC that 
um, said they'd be willing to 3D print this object out of metal once you've got the design for it. So you'll go through the design, 3D printing, if this is of interest to you, especially 3D printing of metals, which is kind of a, a newer 3D printing topic, this might be for you. Um, you'll be doing some stress analysis. There's probably some internal pressure going on inside this valve, um, maybe some controls in this one. Uh, so if that interests you, go ahead and, and you know give a good liking to that particular project. OK, there's another local company. Well, I mean, they're a huge global company, actually, called Millipore Sigma. They're sort of a provider of scientific equipment. They've contacted us, and one problem that they have is they have a lot of line workers that have to like raise and lower objects off conveyor belts often, and they want sort of like a simple device that can like lift and lower packages of like 50 pounds um, from like a conveyor to a shelf or something like that. Okay. Um, we considered maybe bringing in some IEs on this project because this does have like some human ergonomics and human factors and industrial engineering components, but I think we're going to stick with MEs mostly on this. But if you have any interest in sort of like human ergonomics and um, mechanisms, right, mechanical advantage, because you're going to be trying to move some weight a short distance um, over and over and over quickly, um, this could be something that, that might be interesting for you. All right. Now one maybe a little more near and dear to me um, is a company called Cornerstone Composites. So Cornerstone, it's about a mile and a half north of here. It's kind of right off Capitol Drive. Um, they make fiber reinforced composites for a lot of different applications. Um, you hopefully, if you've got interest in composites, maybe you'll take my elective, but one component that they make has flash. And so if you're sort of looking at this image here, this is the component that they make right out of the line. And it has these little like bits of fiber reinforced plastic that are sort of on the piece that they need to get rid of. These sort of like little bits are called flash. And they bought this downdraft table. So you see these holes that are on this table and they bought this downdraft table so that when they're kind of removing this flash sort of by hand, their operators, it draws down into that downdraft table and sort of removes that flash as it's coming off the piece. The problem though, is that some of the flakes that come off this are kind of big and they can kind of clog up these pores. So this downdraft table just isn't working very well for them. So what they want to do is they want to make like a downdraft tent or like a tented area that has got like a controlled environment. So we're actually going to have a cross-disciplinary project, two MEs and two IEs work together to kind of design a solution for them that's like a tented downdraft tents to sort of control the environment so that if an operator goes in there and they're kind of getting rid of this flash on these sides of these composites it just kind of like downdrafts into a filtration system of some kind okay so again woods ergonomics human safety hvac filtration if those sort of things like interest you and composites too i guess i mean i should have listed that there um this might be a project for you i'll probably advise this one by the way dream bikes this one might be for somebody that has more of an artistic flair. Uh, engineers, you know, were thought of as very rigid right angles, but this company is one that's also, again, pretty close to MSOE, about a mile and a half away from us. They're a local nonprofit that takes in bikes from the community and refurbishes them and sells them, more or less. Um, what they want is better racks for their bikes, and they would like to have sort of like an artistic spin on it so right now what you see here is like they've got these wooden racks that sort of get the job done but they want something that just like looks a little bit nicer and maybe uses refurbished bike components as like the rack okay i think it's kind of a cool idea um so if you're interested in you know bicycles artistic design stress analysis trusses fea those sorts of things um this one's kind of cool it's got like this artistic side to it which if, if you're into i think might be cool plus it's helping out a nonprofit, which i think is also kind of a, a warm-hearted kind of thing all right misumi so misumi is a japanese-based company but they have subsidiaries everywhere that um, is kind of a component manufacturer and distributor what they want is they want a test bench like a, another testing device it's, it's that would sit on a tabletop and do salt spray testing on some of their mechanical components. So in this picture over here, you see a series of components that have been exposed to a salt spray test. So here's just some steel component that after 72 hours of being sprayed with salt water has a bunch of rust on it. After 168 hours, it's just like all rusted out. And if you put some coating on it, which you kind of see on the far right, and you do that same sort of testing, this piece is completely fine. And they're intermediate, levels of coating and materials that they have, but they more or less want to make a device that automatically sprays salt water onto these 
components so that they can like test the life of them. Um, they're going to provide the samples. They'll provide money for you to make the prototype. So if you have interest in fluids, which you would probably need for this nozzle design, something like that, there's some minor amount of chemistry here. It's really just using salt water. So really not that much chemistry, but there you have to have a little bit of chemistry knowledge to do this one. Um, experimental design. So you're going to have to design the experimental salt spray test and then automation and controls. So because you're going to be spraying water, turning water off, spraying water, turning water off. There's a little bit of control aspect to this. So if you liked kind of the auto controls idea, controls class, this might be for you. Continuing on. This one's kind of cool, ProX. ProX is a food company, an automation company focused on um, food, <laughs> food crops. Uh, what they want from us is they want a machine that can quickly like peel and polish what they call root crops. So parsnips, carrots, <laughs> potatoes, <laughs> etc. cetera. Um, please mute your mic if you haven't. Emilio, please mute your mic, thank you. Um, good for people with interest in plants nature, they're kind of a food crop producer. Uh, robotics, because you're gonna have some automatic machine that's peeling and polishing these vegetables. And then controls, a lot of controls in this one. So if that's interests you, uh, go for that one. Next, this one is uh, more near and dear to me as well. Uh, is a company that's in Milwaukee called Greenhouse Composites. It's a Milwaukee company that manufactures surfboards out of natural materials. So uh, traditionally, surfboards have an internal like foam core, which you can kind of see here in this image. This is like the inside of a surfboard. And what Milwaukee or Greenhouse Composites has invented more or less is a new composite material that they would like to use to eliminate the need for foam. So foam is not really a good natural material and using foam kind of flies in the face of surfing culture, right? So what they want to do is kind of make a truss structure that looks a bit like this out of their new jute composite material. This is a really cool like composites project. So uh, you would design the truss, you would manufacture the surfboard, um, do some analysis of it, et cetera. So composites, FEA, Sustainable engineering, I think if you have like an environmental itch that you want to scratch, this could be a good one. Mechanics, materials, et cetera. So if you're going to do this one, you got to enroll in my composites class, which we'll offer in the fall, which is MEC 4676. And you'd also probably need to take the FEA class, which is MEC 4060 in the fall. I mean, you got to take either 4060 or 4160, which is FEA or CFD in the fall anyway. So um, might as well take the FEA if you're going to do this one, right? OK, so that's it for the industry projects. Um, now let's talk about some of the faculty submitted projects. So these are projects that have been proposed by the MSOE faculty um, for you guys to work on. First is the ASME design competitions. So Dr. Mahinfla every year fields usually two teams of engineers that compete in the ASME design competition. Don't know exactly what the design competition is going to be yet. Usually that gets released in the summertime, what the competition is going to be exactly. but it's usually some like robotics-y type thing um, that you would work on. In the past, there's been this um, football playing robots. I'm not gonna play the video right now, but if you wanna check out this video, it's actually kind of cool. Um, so there you go. Um, if you have interest in robotics, mechatronics, mechanics, controls, those sorts of things, and you wanna do some competition, maybe this one's for you. Um, MSOE has traditionally done very well in these competitions, by the way. So uh, a little extra incentive there. Moving on. Dr. Rodriguez uh, usually fields a team or two for the fluid power vehicle challenge. Um, sort of what you see in the lower right is a picture of a bicycle that's powered by some fluid power. And again, there will be a design competition where the competition is about creating a fluid powered vehicle. Don't know what it's going to be exactly yet, um, but again, usually it'll come out in the summertime. But you're going to make some sort of vehicle that's powered by hydraulics or pneumatics or some other fluid. Uh, so if you're interested in fluid power, instrumentation, automation, they've had some wacky vehicles over the years. I mean, yeah, this bicycle is like somewhat normal for like what they've done in the past, considering some of the things they've done in the past. So anyway, and fluid power and uh, some competition could be could be kind of cool. Onwards, design, build, fly. Uh, Dr. Fleming uh, usually does the design, build, fly. This year he has two teams. And I think he'll probably have a, two teams next year if there's enough interest in this. But 
This is run through AIAA, the American Institute of Astronautics and Aeronautics, and they hold it this annual competition where your job as the competition team is to design some aerial vehicle from the ground up. So design, build, and fly. Um, you're responsible for the full gamut, uh, aerodynamic, structural, electrical systems, batteries, everything, right? It changes year to year what exactly the competition is. Um, one year it was to deliver medical devices you know, through the air over 500 feet. This was like during the pandemic times, they thought that was cool. One vehicle of the challenges in the past was like a vehicle, like an aircraft that automatically puts out fires. So they've had some some cool, some cool um, competitions. Um, people with interest in aerodynamics, aircraft design, all sorts of uh, good stuff there. I usually field a team or two for the AIAA space and mission design. <clears throat> so again, this one is, uh, sort of a design competition from AIAA. And in this design competition, uh, you're doing some space mission related project. Uh, they've kind of varied wildly over the years. Um, this current year, the design project is to build a uh, Mars ascent vehicle that goes from the surface of Mars to um, Mars Sol 5 or orbit, which is kind of a cool vehicle design. And um, in the past, it's been like landing a lander on the moons of Phobos and Deimos. So some really cool stuff there. Don't know what it's going to be. Again, it gets released in mid-August. So a little bit of roll of the dice, but it's going to be something space mission design oriented. So if you got interested in astronautics, space mechanisms, space mechanics, those sorts of things, this one might be for you. Onward. Dr. V also participates in the AIAA engine design competition. Um, this year, I think he's really confident that the team might actually win. Like he feels really good about the current team this year. Um, but again, they have some design competition that usually comes out in mid-August, and it's about some engine design. So in the past, redesign of a Concorde hypersonic jet engine, turbine engines, etc. So going to be very heavy in thermodynamics and engine design and etc. Dr. V has a stipulation that you have to take his gas turbine engines elective in the fall, which is MEC 4873, if you want to do this particular project. Okay, Dr. Swedish has a, a NASA project that he usually does every single year, sometimes two. Um, this upcoming year, he'll just have one project, and it's a little bit unknown exactly what it's going to be. So it's a bit of a gamble, but, you know, it's going to be something NASA and space related. All right, so in the past, things have been like design of an automated system for watering plants in space, design of stowage systems for food packs and foodstuffs, et cetera. So if you are into space um, and want to sort of take a little bit of a gamble here on a NASA project, uh, maybe this one's for you. A lot of space related stuff this year, I'm just kind of realizing. But all right, Dr. Kamiski, he is the head of the Rocketry Club here at MSOE. And he's looking for a senior design team to design a new nozzle for the rocket. Rocket design team competes in the Wisconsin Space Grant Consortium Collegiate Rocket Launch, WSGC, and Minnesota State Consortium Midwest Rocket Launch. So they do two competitions and they want a new rocket nozzle for their rocket. So people with interested in fluids, CFD, compressible flow, and rocketry, uh, maybe this one is for you. Dr. Kamiski has stipulated again that you have to take the aircraft engine and turbine class uh, as well as the CFD class in the fall if you want to participate in this project. All right, Baja vehicle. So again, kind of sticking with some of the design competition teams. Dr. Sebastianovich is the head of the SAE here at MSOE and he wants some Baja related project. Uh, so the Baja team this current year is going to compete in a couple of months and go to competition and we'll see what happens. But Dr. Sebastianovich kind of told me that the project that you would work on next year kind of depends on how the team does this year in their competition. So where the team is weak, the senior design project is going to revolve around strengthening that weakness. So it could be drivetrain, vehicle mass suspension, braking, anything like vehicle related. So again, a, a bit of a gamble, but um, if you're related, interested in vehicles and things of that sort, or if you're on the in the SAE club, maybe um, this one's for you. Onwards, Dr. Rizza is big into 
medical devices, right? He teaches the medical device class and always usually, you know, usually has some project related to biomedical applications. So he has a recurring sort of biomedical applications project that comes up next year. It'll be um, 3D printing of, I think, a head, like a head brace, a cranial brace. Uh, so kind of cool. Usually, you know, the, the item that you make is going to be additively manufactured by medical devices, medical devices, failure analysis, those sorts of things. So 3D printing is always kind of attract students. And if you like biomedical applications, uh, this one uh, could be for you. Forward. Dr. Vias for the new fluids class that we're going to teach in this. To have some sort of bench top demonstration devices, and he wants to have a Pelton wheel. Don't get confused with Peloton. Because that's what I originally thought he wanted when he <laughs> emailed me as some sort of adaptation to the Peloton bike. But no, he wants a Pelton wheel, which is basically a sort of a not medieval, but an old school device that water flows through a river. It turns this wheel and that is used to power something. So he just wants like a small demonstrator unit that sh just sh shows that in the in the fluids class. All right. So if you're interested in fluid mechanics, energy harvesting, power systems, this one might be for you. You have to have completed fluids too if you want to do this project. Dr. Weiss also wants for his thermal class a benchtop demonstration of a heat engine. So I've kind of kept this schematic up here as a general schematic for what a heat engine looks like for those of you that remember what a heat engine looks like from your thermal class, hopefully. But he wants some sort of demonstration unit for a benchtop of a um, heat engine. So pretty simple, but I think kind of cool. Like if you're taking the thermal class and you want to see a demo of what this actually looks like, might be nice to have some piece to showcase it. So if you want to design and build this, this might be for you. So if you're interested in engines, thermodynamics, there'll be a lot of prototyping here and then education in general. So this is going to be a demo unit. So maybe as part of that design, you include like arrows on it or something that point to the key features. That would be kind of a cool thing, right? So you have to have completed ME3105, which is the Thermal Fluid Systems Lab, or you plan to take the Thermal Fluid Systems Lab in the fall. Forward. Dr. Barnicky also wants some like demo devices. And I think this project is kind of unique. Not often do you get like a material science project, but um, Dr. Barnicky is looking for a team that wants to design a series of casting molds that demonstrate good and bad casting techniques. So casting is a very like, it's an art form in a way. I think if you take the material science classes and sequence, you sort of cast something yourself. You get the idea and understanding of how artistic and skillful it takes to make a good casting. So she wants a, a team that can showcase a good and a bad mold and design for casting as part of their project. So if you're if you liked that material science class and you like that metals casting portion of the class, this one could be for you. So you'll do some metals casting, probably a lot of metals casting. You'll want to validate the parts that you make with models that you might create in solid cast. And then again, some educational side of this as well, where you're showcasing on these on these molds and on these pieces, various aspects of it, right? OK. Dr. Patterson, Mr. Gadget himself, he wants to create a 3D printed remote controlled fixed wing aircraft. So this is going to have flavors of like the design build fly competition, except there's no real competition here. This will be more if you're interested in 3D printing. So in this project, design the aircraft, um, most of the key aerodynamic features. But uh, Patterson is saying that you're mostly going to be using commercial off the shelf. COTS is commercial off the shelf electronics, motors, and batteries. So you buy like a lot of the components that already exist, but you're responsible for designing like the wing element and the fuselage and how it's 3D printed. And you'll probably do some aerodynamics testing in a wind tunnel and so on. So if you got interested in aircraft, aerodynamics, 3D printing, this one's for you. Uh, Dr. Patterson stipulates that you have to have completed fluids too, and you should probably be enrolled in the CFD class, which is um, MEC 4160. He also wants to build a scale race car. So if aircraft are not for you, but you still are interested in like 3D printing some vehicle, maybe you want to do the, the race car instead of the, the fixed wing aircraft. So again, 3D printed, remote controlled, 1 12th scale car. 
So you design the car components and again, probably purchase off the shelf components like electronics, motors, and batteries and sort of integrate them together. So interest in racing vehicles, aerodynamics, because again, you'll probably put this in a wind tunnel to sort of see how it would perform. And then 3D printing again, because you'll be 3D printing a majority of the pieces that go into this car. So must have completed the fluids two class again, because there'll be some aerodynamics and you're encouraged to take the CFD class. OK, that's it for faculty. We do have some student and alumni proposed projects as well, so I'll just run those down really quickly. One of the alumni, John Stowe, graduated a couple of years ago, is interested in designing a diffuser for an Audi vehicle, so an Audi A7. Uh, he has a lot of access to composite manufacturing equipment, and he has a machine shop with a lot of machining equipment as well. So if you got interested in composites, fluid dynamics vehicles um, and you're interested in designing a kind of a, like a an OEM part, maybe this one is for you. Blake Hall on the baseball team is interested in designing a new baseball pitching machine. So you kind of see an image on the right there of a typical baseball pitching machine with these two sort of like accelerating motor um, circular tracks. You feed the baseball in there and it shoots it out the front and then you can sort of hit those baseballs. The problem with this machine is it only really does one type of pitch, like a fastball. So what Blake is proposing is to design a machine that not only throws fastballs, but can also throw other types of pitches like curveballs, sliders, etc. But not only can it throw those pitches, but it's dynamic and then it can pitch a fastball and then the very next pitch it can do a curveball without you sort of having to manually adjust the machine. So if you're interested in a lot of dynamics in this, sporting goods, controls, um, maybe consider this project. I would guess that the prototype that you make is probably not going to be the full scale pitching machine. It might be like a smaller scale, like tennis ball pitcher or like a ping pong ball pitcher or something with the same concepts or ideas, but still could be um, still could be kind of fun. All right, we got a interdisciplinary project between ME, CE, E, E, and C, S. This one's a bit wild. We're trying to kind of bring all the departments together to make a geo robot. So Riki is in the electrical engineering department. We'd like to build a variable geometry truss robot called the geo robot also um, with linear actuators that kind of adjust the truss sort of that you see in the lower right into various orientations. So as the ME, you're going to be doing the mechanical components and joints, and then you'll work with the other people on the team to sort of design the actuation and how this thing actually moves. So kind of cool stuff if you're into robots, actuation, controls, automation. Um, consider this guy. Uh, Lei Qian wants to create an adaptable device for automatically closing window blinds. I guess he's got trouble sleeping these days. Um, the idea is that you want to have some device that's more or less universal that can be used to just quickly go onto some sort of window shades or window blinds and have the ability to actuate them. So somebody with interested in mechanisms, controls, actuation, sort of universal design, ergonomics, there's a lot going on here. Could be an interesting one. Okay, uh, that's it. So we've reached the end. Uh, a lot of projects to mull over and think about. And let's talk about next steps. So just in a few minutes, I'll send you an email requesting your project preferences. It's just going to be a link to a website where you fill everything out. OK, so fill that out. Take some time. Talk with your friends about what you might want to work on and et cetera. Um, there is also going to be a box folder where some of the descriptions are laid out in a little bit more detail. So not all projects have additional descriptions, but most of them have like, you know, a half page additional description, some even a little bit more. So go fill out your preferences. Do that by next Friday. Otherwise, I can't guarantee that you're going to, you know, your preferences will be will be hit. OK, that's it for now. I'll stick around if there are questions. Otherwise, thanks for coming. I have recorded this, so it will be available for viewing again later if you'd like. If there's any questions, I'll take them now. When is this due? Next Friday. How big are the groups? On the project.
um, usually somewhere between three and six people. Okay, um, if no other questions, then please fill out your preferences. If you have any questions, send me email. Otherwise, Dr. Hart, I have a quick question. Go for it. Uh, is this uh, presentation posted anywhere so we can like look back through? Yeah, the... the box folder will have this exact presentation in it. Okay, thank you. Yep. You'll get an email from me in 10 minutes or so with all the details. OK, bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day.